Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and this right here is my home lab. What we're going to be doing in this video is talking about both the hardware and software involved in the thing you see behind all of these videos, my home lab. Now the first question we have is what the heck is a home lab? Uh, it could be a lot of things. It could be a collection of servers that you use to run all your home automation tasks, things like that. Or it could be as simple as something like a Raspberry Pi or this little BMAX mini PC here. It all really just depends on the software on these things and how you intend on using them. And like I said in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about what I have going on back there and the specific use cases. And the most obvious thing with this setup is the giant cabinet behind me. And this is a Nave Point 22 u network cabinet that has removable side doors as well as a glass door front. Overall, it's super cool, and for my use case, as you're gonna tell as we go into this video, this is completely overkill. Now, the reason I got such a massive server cabinet is hopefully someday it will be used to its full potential. I'm in an apartment right now, but hopefully someday in the future when I have a home, I'll be able to run like a whole security system with uh, power over ethernet cameras, and I, I have room to expand in this thing. It also features some top vent fans that are gonna be really nice when I have a lot of things in there and it might get heated up. So it will give some good circulation even though it's technically fully enclosed. So the actual case is pretty cool, but anything that I do not want to host locally, I host with the sponsor of today's video, Linode. They have fantastic one-click installers such as their Nextcloud one-click installer. They have a WordPress game service. They do have a lot to choose from. And recently they've been giving you the ability to use their Linode blog storage to add NVMe storage to any compute instance that you have up and running with a 10 to 20% increase in throughput. And you could try all this out today by using the link in the description to go ahead and get a hundred dollar 60 day credit now the very first thing that i have is a mini pc just like this it's not this exact one the mini pc that i have in there is the menace form um 340 mini pc featuring a ryzen 5 u mobile processor now this is a wonderful little computer my fiance was using it for a while running manjaro gnome for all of her school stuff but right now what I have on this computer is Proxmox. This is a great, these mini PCs make really good Proxmox servers, especially if you have a good amount of RAM and space in them. Now this is the actual Proxmox cluster on the mini PC in there. And you can see, I don't have too much going on right here. The main thing running is my Fedora server, which I actually have an instance of Docker on, but I also have two Windows virtual machines. This first one up here is the one that I use currently. Uh, I use this every once in a while for things like ArcGIS Pro and uh, testing and things like that. Now I have this Windows Fresh right here, which is a duplicate of this one once I got everything perfectly set up. So if I experiment a little too hard and I accidentally break something in this virtual machine, it I, I could just go and delete it and restore it with the Windows Fresh. Now this right here is my Fedora server. Not too much going on right here. You can see the last thing I ran was an IPA, which was when I first booted it to see what the actual IP address is because what I have on it over here is Yacht. This is a graphical user utility to go ahead and easily manage Docker. Now on here, oh, I gotta re-log in, hold on. I waited too long. There we go. Now on here, I just started kind of experimenting with this and playing around with various Docker instances. Right now, the things I have on here are code server, which is VS code hosted on the web and Homer, which is a wonderful utility for having a easy dashboard to actually manage all your home network services or have links to easily access them all. I don't have either of these set up properly quite yet. If I open up one, so if I go over here under applications and I go to the code server, for example, I can open up the web UI and this will take us to VS code. So what I can do, I can mark this as done and start a new file and then I could begin typing and coding or writing markdown or whatever I need to do on this. And this is running independently on the Fedora server on Proxmox through Docker. So it's kind of like a whole tier system of things going on. And then additionally, I have Homer. I was playing around with a lot. I was playing around with it quite a bit, but I ended up uh, breaking it in the config. I know what's wrong with it, but this is my current Homer dashboard. So I'm definitely gonna be needing to uh, update this video in a couple months once I have everything all set up and worked out. But overall, Proxmox is a great tool. I have this Fedora server running Docker and you can put a lot of different things in Docker. Some other things that I'm going to consider doing in the future are like a network-wide VPN and ad blockers, things like that. 
but I haven't had time because I've been rather busy as of recent, so I haven't been able to get all that stuff set up yet. So that is what I have running on that mini PC, and the next piece of hardware in that server cabinet is going to be the Synology NAS. They actually sent this over to me for review, but I had to buy all the hard drives, so that was expensive. I have uh, four four terabyte hard drives in there. I'm pr pretty sure the RAID right now is RAID 5, so I can lose up to one drive and still be able to restore all my data. But this right here is what the website looks like for the disk station. It's been a pretty good device so far. If I go over here, this is the actual UI, well, the web UI to go ahead and manage this. And one thing you're going to notice is within here, I actually have Docker. So I have two instances of Docker running on my home network. And the main thing that this is right here is Jellyfin. I use Jellyfin on this instance of Docker because it's easier to connect to my media library, which is hosted on this NAS. And overall, Synology has a really good UI to go ahead and manage all this stuff here, including the Docker application and all that. Very similar to what we were just looking at in Yacht. And this over here is my Jellyfin server. I have, a, I have quite a bit of things on here. I'm actually uh, rather proud of the media that I was able to collect over the uh, last couple years. And Jellyfin's really good. It has its hiccups here and there, but for free and open source software, completely free and open source, it is fantastic. And that's just one thing running on this NAS. Additionally, I use a lot of the other uh, Synology services, primarily like the photos and their, uh, their drive utilities. So if I go under here under File Station, for example, and I go under Homes, you're gonna see we have myself and my fiance. It's pretty cool because she has the uh, photos application on her cell phone. So very similar to how like Google Photos, Amazon Photos, all those alternatives work. This will let her sync up with our NAS. So all her photos will be backed up locally as well as whatever services she uses. And of course, the same goes for me as well. If I go in here, I have the drive and photos. If I go into photos, uh, we have photo library, which this is a lot of the Google photo stuff that I moved over here. And then if we go to mobile backup, my Pixel 6, you'll be able to see all my folders and whatnot of things that I have backed up from my phone. And then Drive, of course, I'm using this a lot more to go ahead and manage projects, documents. We have disk images here. So if I open this up, I have a couple different Linux ISOs that I use on a frequent basis. So I don't need to go and re-download those all the time. And then right here, Vault, just a spoiler for a future video. Uh, these are documents, markdown documents, because I've been playing around with Obsidian, because apparently you guys really recommend it. And then of course here I have VirtualBox, so Linux Mint, Pop! OS, and an Ubuntu, so I can just drag and drop those instead of having to reset it up. It makes life really easy. Of this NAS, that's my primary usage. There's also a virtual, ma a virtual machine manager on here. Uh, but I don't really use it too much because it's running off of disks and it's a RAID 5, so it's not going to be the quickest experience. But it's cool that they do have that option. If I go up here, I can see all the applications that are available on the server, including the drive. This is just a, a, a better user interface compared to the file manager that we are just looking at. And then, of course, there's like phone, mobile apps, and things like that. So when it comes to the server cabinet back there, that's really all that's in there when it comes to actual active computers and software. Uh, below that, you'll see a printer, which I have it in there because there's currently room because there's actually really not that much in there. So it's cool that's in there. It's connected through internet, has a scanner, all that fun jazz. Now, under the printer, this looks like what would be the most exciting thing, but it is not. Uh, this computer case or this server rack mount case is completely empty. This is actually what I used to have my main desktop in, and I used to have it behind this desk and connect up that way. But now my desktop is in a mini ATX case on my actual desk at the moment. Eventually what I want to do with this case is go ahead and make this the dedicated Proxmox server with maybe like a Ryzen Epic CPU or a Threadmaster or whatever I'm able to get my hands on with maybe some dedicated GPU someday in the future when GPU prices aren't too uh, crazy. So then maybe I could do some VM gaming or something like that off of it. So with all that, that's what's currently going on in my home lab. Definitely a lot of room for improvement and upgrades, but I got enough going on that it's it was worth making a video about. A lot of people have been asking what is actually in that thing, so I figured I would answer. And like I said near the beginning of this video, what isn't in that server that I actively need is being hosted over on the node, the sponsor of today's video. So again, go ahead and use the link in the description for a $100 60-day credit. Big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Your guys' support is truly humbling. And uh, with all that, thank you everybody else for watching this video, liking, subscribing, all that fun stuff. Uh, with that, 
Have a beautiful day and goodbye.